I'm Tom Emmons. I'm a software engineering lead for AI networking at Arista Networks. And I'm going to be talking today about AI networking visibility and, you know, what we're doing to help people actually run all these great networks that Hugh and Hardev talked about in their talk. So I think, I mean, Hugh talked about this a lot, right? But, like, the timeframes that the AI um, interacts with the network is on the microseconds and milliseconds. And all of your traditional counters are on the time scale of seconds. So they just don't capture most. AI networking problems. Additionally, Rocky is a traditionally lossless protocol, and so your traditional network monitoring of looking for packet drops doesn't catch most problems. And so we have to look elsewhere. And so I'm going to show you sort of two features that we've been building to kind of help you know monitor and run these AI networking networks. Um, so the first is called AI Analyzer, which allows us to get very fine grain um, interface traffic rates um, over short periods of time. So what does this look like? Um, so we prepared a demo here where we took one of our um, Arista Leaf Tomahawk switches and we connected that to a simulated GPU servers from a traffic generator. And all the traffic from the GPUs is being forwarded via ECMP to eight spines. Using AI Analyzer, we're able to capture traffic statistics at 100 microsecond intervals over the course of 60 seconds. Um, so you can see here, we ran the traffic, and then we, you export that data. Um, here we export it to CSV, and then you would load this data into some sort of time series database, such as InfluxDB. You can then view the traffic statistics using Grafana. And you can see if you were looking at this over the time scale of seconds, everything would look perfectly even, right? But then when you zoom in, you do see that there's substantial microsecond variation of this traffic. And so using this, you can get really great insight into how is my application actually using the network? What's really happening at the microsecond level? Do I have congestion in my network? Is my load balancing actually working? And so this gives you great insight to what's really happening on the time scales that the AI traffic is actually operating on, not your sort of traditional aggregate you know, counters over seconds and minutes and hours. Um, next, I think the feature we're even more excited about is the AI agent, where we're extending EOS to the NIC servers itself. So as you may know, Arista features a centralized database where we store all of our configuration and also telemetry and state. And agents interact with each other through this database storing their state. And so we've extended this to the NIC, where we can run an AI an agent on the NIC and that NIC will connect with our EOS database, allowing you to manage and monitor the Tor and the NIC connections for one centralized location. So what does this look like? Um, Here we just have... Just uh, yeah. Tor? Um, yeah, so you would run the... Eight, What's Tor? Um, top of rack switch. Thank you. Yeah, at least. The switch connected to your NIC ser your, yeah, servers. Um, yeah, what does this look like? So here we have a switch that's connected to three NICs. And you can see by default, um, they're not configured. So you could go and manually configure the connections to these, but we actually expect auto dis um, discovery will be far more um, utilized. So here you can go into one of your interfaces, you go into the attached NIC, and you can attach a pre-configured profile to that NIC. You then just configure auto discovery, and using LLDP, the Arista EOS on the switch, will connect with the AI agent on the NIC and create a connection. And over that, we can, con we can sync configuration. So here you can see we've synced DSCP configuration, ECN configuration, and PFC configuration. We can then go from the switch, see what is actually configured on the NIC. And so here you can see we've configured remarking, Remapping, we've configured ECN, and we've configured PFC. So one very common issue we see in networks is that the cause configuration on the network is different from the cause configuration on the servers. And this leads to poor behavior. And so using something like this, where you're configuring all of the cause of the entire network in one centralized place, you can avoid these inconsistencies and make sure that the configuration that you want that's actually optimized is actually deployed everywhere. What NIC is required to do that? Any NIC. 
So the way we've developed the AI agent is we effectively have two layers. We have sort of a top la layer that interacts with the EOS. Um, and then we have an under layer, which would be a Nix specific plugin. And so what we're able to do is create sort of generic counters, and then we would have um, Nix specific plugins that would um, convert all of the specific counters that any Nix provides and map that to these sort of PI configurations. So, so we're actually looking at making this work for Bluefield, ConnectX, and Thor, and then we're also actively talking to many of the other companies who are looking to build Nix. Yeah, so I'm trying to understand what there's code there, which is the agent. Where is that code actually running? It's so the AI agent is act needs to be deployed on the server. Depending on the NIC, it can either be deployed on the server itself, or if the NIC supports embedded processes, we can actually run it on sort of NIC embedded CPUs also. Gotcha. And that would be a deployment decision made by the customer. Okay. I think even more exciting than configuration, though, is actually counters. Um, as we all know, like the NIC has many, interacts very closely with the network and has a lot of counters that are of interest to the network itself. So here you can see, you can go on the switch and you can see that the NIC experienced FCS errors. And so the networking team with only access to the networking equipment can debug this fiber between the network and the servers. You know, I think in ad more addition to this, you know, most NICs, deploy a very extensive set of RDMA counters, you know, whether you experienced congestion, whether you saw packet drops, whether you saw reorders, and all of those can be exposed to the switches to more holistically view the network as a whole. Because we all know the network doesn't end at, you know, the top of rack switch. It extends all the way to the server. Um, so then we, at Arista, we have a cloud vision, um, which is our software for sort of configuring and monitoring your networks as a whole. And we've added the AI agent through this. Um, so it's traditionally EOS export state to a net database, um, which Cloud Vision operates on. And so we've added all of these NIC statistics into the same database. And through this, we can give you a single management view where not only do you have visibility into your spine switches and your leaf switches, but your NIC sits also. And so here you can see we have configuration applied on our, all, all of our network but two of our NICs are missing their PFC config. And through, two, through our Cloud Vision portal, you can go and configure your NICs in addition to your network, and now you can be confident that your PFC is correctly configured across your network. Is there actual inference running in the agent, or are you doing some kind of inference at the, just the cloud level? So yeah, the inference is at the cloud level. So the NIC agent itself is just exporting its state, and then, at the cloud level, we look at that state to make sure it's consistent and update it to what we want it to be. Okay, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. And then at the cloud level, what does, I mean, it seems like you could do it with a kind of a state machine. Is there really a need for inference here? What benefit are you getting by actually running an AI model to do some kind of anomaly detection? Yeah, so um, we have all this state. I mean, I think one thing that's very important is if you're debugging the network, you know, the most important thing I found in debugging the network is you really want your network counters and your server counters in the single database, right? And so that's what this is enabling, is you're getting, you, most companies already have, um, you know, some form of infrastructure to get their network counters into a location for troubleshooting. So adding the AI, the NIC counters into that same provides a lot of, you know, gives you much more ability for, to help debug your network. So you can see here, we can go and we can look at, you know, when did our NIC experience um, our errors? And so here, for example, we can see around 945 that the NICs experience RDMA errors indicative of dropped packets. And so we're actually able to notice that and raise an alert to the networking team that, you know, according to this NIC, the, net, the network probably dropped packets at this time scale. Right. And then using Cloud Vision, you know, this can then be correlated to, well, at that time we saw link flaps. And so therefore, you know, any application degradation and performance at that time would be due to these link flaps. So you're using AI to identify real anomalies versus noise. We're attempting to, yeah. We're, so yeah, we definitely, we're examining all these time series and trying to find anomalies. And we're also attempting to correlate anomalies um, between events in the network and events in the server. Yeah, and so 
I mean, what we're striving to do is give you comprehensive visibility, you know, from end to end to all of the places that can impact the performance of your network. And so we've, we've taken all of these AI NIC counters and we're adding it to all of the, much, the telemetry EOS already supports. You know, we have traditional counters, we have queuing statistics, we have discards, um, ECN counters, PFC counters, and being able to correlate all of these network counters with, you know, statistics from the actual servers themselves really enables um, engineers to more accurately and faster debug their networks.